Chapter thirteen of Miss Pym's Camouflage. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Miss Pym's Camouflage by Lady Dorothy Stanley. Chapter thirteen. The next morning, Miss Pym was horrified to learn that Monsieur Dubois and his wife had been shot, and that their two daughters had been forced to attend the execution. The girls were told that their lives would be spared if they revealed the hiding place of the English spy as they were unable to do so they were tortured outraged and shot miss pym felt herself a danger to the unhappy inhabitants she had hoped to save many unfortunate young girls but had done so only at the cost of four innocent lives and it was probable that all the girls would be recaptured profoundly distressed she made her way to the station it was hopeless to attempt boarding a passenger train there were very few and the crowding by soldiers and civilians made it difficult to get standing-room miss pym was surprised at the condition of the carriages the paint blistered and cracked the windows so dirty that no one could look out of or into the compartments the engines were rusty the wheels creaked and all the trains appeared thoroughly dilapidated after waiting hours miss pym decided to board a goods train labelled Aachen open trucks laden with rough cases and hampers scrambling up with difficulty for miss pym was past the age of agility she settled herself on a large basket between cases and before long the train moved out and miss pym felt that she was now fairly launched for germany but there was another unaccountable stoppage were they going to search the train for the english spy how imprudent she had been to mention berlin as her objective still after all was she not quite safe even should they make a search at last the long delay was explained six more trucks were being shunted out of the station and were attached with a rough jar to miss pym's train more cases thought she i wonder what they can be sending back into germany but the six trucks were carefully covered over with tarpaulin miss pym looked at the label on the basket upon which she sat it was addressed to frau doktorin gunther neun bahnstrasse charlottenburg it had been crammed so full that the cover was several inches from the basket and tied in and out with coarse string miss pym whose besetting sin was curiosity determined thoroughly to examine the contents of this basket which looked to her very like loot cutting the string at one end she carefully unlaced it and the open basket revealed a bundle of linen this proved to be four fine linen sheets in pillow-cases marked roquefort beneath the linen she found ladies underclothing of fine cambric two silk dresses a box of beautiful lace and in the box a german letter a pile of children's embroidered frocks three dolls and a pretty little doll's parasol and last of all a beautiful sevres china clock ornamented with cupids clearly these things were stolen from a french house and destined to become the property of some german military doctor's wife miss pym had no scruples in opening the letter doubtless it would explain where the things came from and this is what she read my sweet lisa my dear little wife i know how much your ever true heart is troubled the terrible deprivations at home and your well-founded anxieties about me must wound your tender heart i am sending you these nice things as consolation the dresses look too narrow for my lisa's lovely plumpness but you will arrange them with your skilful needle our little lisakin will look an angel in the frocks i send and the lace in this box is i believe very valuable we must hand it down in our family der kleine wilhelm when he grows up must have it for his wife the sheets are good and will please you i know all these things come from the chateau of a real countess the colonel took all the pictures and miniatures but general wiesmann took the jewels such necklaces oh my lisa it made my mouth water to see those diamonds the countess behaved shamefully she insulted us all and called us murderers and thieves 
we did not mind the insults as individuals but we resented them as good germans who have the sacred mission of spreading culture and winning the love and trust of other peoples the son of the countess who is a french captain was at the chateau with his wife and children he was a spy he had come back disguised as a peasant of course we were bound to protect ourselves against spies all the males in the chateau including the count were therefore justly executed we did not like killing the women and children but our general had to overcome his reluctance and it was the truest compassion for when the countess and her daughter-in-law fell what would have become of the children it was painful to me to have to certify to the death of all the inmates of the chateau but war is war and every day it becomes more terrible for us it is nothing but murder and butchery where is the fair play the english talk so much about they have ten times as many men and guns as we have no one can stand their fire we remove our guns as fast as we can and retire according to plan it makes my heart bleed to think of my lisa and the children having such difficulties about food but courage dearest the english i hear are starving and their chief towns and ports have been destroyed by our noble airmen born heroes the all highest says we shall soon have peace with an indemnity which will make us all rich thine ever devoted husband ludwig gunther miss pym wrote in german on a sheet of paper the countess spoke the truth you germans are murderers and thieves indeed your husband has acknowledged it he says that after robbing them of all valuables the whole of this family was butchered but you will be made to suffer for these crimes nemesis she put this postscript with the letter into the envelope replaced it in the box of lace folded the various articles and returned them to the basket which she fastened up again the train was gathering speed but the neglected railway and lack of wheel grease made the journey very rough and unpleasant added to which a sickening odour streamed over the truck whenever the train stopped for some time miss pym was puzzled to account for it but scrambling on one of the cases to obtain a better view of the country she noticed that the cover on one of the trucks had been blown back revealing partly clothed decomposing bodies tied together in bundles of three and four with wire and ropes miss pym sank down on to the basket covering her face with her hands she had expected war to be horrible but this such appalling horrors the massacre of innocent women and babes the savage ferocity of soldiers the desecration of their dead for miss pym realized that these trucks of corpses treated like carrion were destined for the fat factory when these people are conquered she thought these traits of character will nevertheless be latent a german defeated will still and ever be a german ruthless merciless cruel crafty false through and through there will be von schlangas for all time and although the snake's head be trodden in the mud the reptile's body will continue to wriggle england must never sleep again without sentinels to watch never again must she be caught unprepared treaties against war if not backed by force are all scraps of paper commercial treaties are the only ones which have any chance of being observed miss pym now bitterly regretted her undertaking her whole being shrank from the ordeal not that she was concerned about her own safety but she loathed propinquity with these people bruised in body and spirit she lay there passing through Nemour and liege she saw very few people about but the fields were well cultivated the german taskmasters took care of that at liege belgians in gangs were being entrained in cattle trucks to be carried off into slavery it was a fearful sight worse indeed than seeing the poor dead bodies that free men should be enslaved 
and forced to work for the enemy was a bondage so vile that miss pym wept and wept at the shame of it End of chapter thirteen